Hi everyone! Welcome to Husky Robotics FRC Java Tutorial Series. I'm Jasmine and today we are going to learn about the basics of FRC command-based programming. First, we must understand what even is command-based programming? Well, command-based programming is a design pattern that focuses on what the program should do rather than how the program should do it. Basically, it allows users to define robot behavior while minimizing the amount of iteration by iteration logic they must write. To do that, command-based programming is based off of two core abstractions, subsystems and commands. Let's take a deeper look at subsystems, the basic unit of organization in command-based programming. Subsystems are classes that encapsulate a collection of lower level robot hardware that works together as a unit such as a group of motor controllers, sensors, and or pneumatic actuators. Some examples of subsystems include drivetrains, elevators, shooters, etc. Capabilities of subsystems are also defined in the class, being the interfaces that hardware can be accessed by the rest of the robot code. You will find the basic structure of a subsystem very similar to the structure of an object. The subsystem's hardware components are instance variables, which get declared at the class level and initialized in the constructor, just like properties for an object. The different capabilities of a subsystem are defined in methods, just like behaviors for an object. Following the concept of encapsulation in object-oriented programming, access to a subsystem's hardware is restricted except for through the subsystem's public methods. One special characteristic of subsystems in FRC is the periodic method, which gets called every scheduler run, or every 20 milliseconds by default. This method is a great place to put background tasks that need to be done continually, such as logging data about a subsystem. For example, an elevator subsystem would define its instance variables as the motor controllers for the elevator motors, an encoder to track the height of the elevator, and a pneumatic brake to hold the elevator at its current position. An elevator subsystem would also have methods defining its capabilities, such as moving up or down, stopping, braking or unbraking, and reading its current height. Finally, a task that may be done periodically is logging the current height of the elevator. Next, let's learn about the second major component of command-based programming, which is commands. Commands define high-level robot actions or behaviors. A command is basically a simple state machine that is either in the initializing, executing, ending, or idle state. Simple commands can be combined to make command groups, which can accomplish even more complicated robot behavior. Some examples of commands include drive forward and score, follow line, pick up ball, etc. Let's take a look at the basic structure of a simple command. First, any subsystem that a command depends on should be specified as requirements in the command's constructor. It is good practice to have these subsystems passed into the command's constructor to avoid declaring these subsystems as global variables. Second, the user must specify what the command should do in each of its states, which is done by overriding the initialize, execute, and end methods. The command must also specify when it has finished executing, which is done by overriding the isFinished method. The initialize method is called when a command is initially scheduled. This method should be used to set subsystems into their starting states for execution. It is also useful for running tasks that only need to be done once per time scheduled, such as setting the state of a solenoid actuator. The execute method is called repeatedly while the command is scheduled. This method should be used to run any tasks that need to be done continually when a command is scheduled, such as updating motor outputs to match joystick inputs. The end method is called once when the command ends. This method is used to wrap up commands, such as setting motors back to zero. The method argument interrupted specifies whether the command finished normally, when is finished returns true, or when the command is interrupted by another command or being explicitly canceled. Users can use this argument to differentiate the end behaviors of their commands. The isFinish method is 
called repeatedly after the execute method when a command is scheduled. As soon as this method returns true, the end method is called and the command is unscheduled or finished. To avoid clutter in the code, there are defaults to these methods. Initialize, execute, and end are all defaulted to do nothing, and is finish is defaulted to return false. Let's go back to the elevator example and take a look at an example command. The command is called raise elevator to max height and is supposed to do exactly what it sounds like. We would first need to specify that the command requires the elevator subsystem. For the command's initialization, we will want to unbreak the elevator so the elevator can move during the command's execution. During the command's execution, we will want to raise the elevator so the elevator gets closer to the max height. For the command's end, we will want to stop the elevator and break the elevator so the elevator remains at max height. We would know the command is finished when the current height is equal to some constant max height. Notice how all of the actions that the elevator performs are methods defined previously in the elevator subsystem. I've been saying the word schedule a lot, and that is because the command scheduler is a very important class that is actually responsible for running the commands. Each iteration, which is every 20 milliseconds by default, the command scheduler pulls buttons to schedule any new commands, checks the resources of currently scheduled commands to avoid conflicts, executes the currently scheduled commands, and removes any commands that have finished or was interrupted. Multiple commands can run concurrently, but the command scheduler will never schedule more than one command for a given subsystem at the same time. If the new command being scheduled requires a subsystem in use, the new command will either interrupt the currently running command if the currently running command is interruptible, or the new command will not be scheduled. Let's take a look at the scheduler run sequence for a single iteration. First, the command scheduler runs each subsystem's periodic method. Secondly, the command scheduler pulls the state of each registered trigger to see if any new commands should be scheduled. Then, the initialize method for each newly scheduled command is run. Thirdly, the command scheduler calls the execute method for each currently scheduled command and then calls the isFinish method to see if the command has finished. If the command has finished, the end method is called, the command is descheduled, and its required subsystems are freed. Finally, each subsystem's default command, if it has one, is scheduled, and the initialize method for that command is called. Don't worry if these concepts seem confusing at first, as this is just a brief intro to a pretty advanced coding topic, and it will get easier with practice and watching our other tutorials. Thanks for watching and have a great day.